that all of you have gone through the introduction part of the story an angel in disguise so now you may please take page number 77 in your treasure trove chapter 6 an angel in disguise by t s arthur we will see the story in detail now the first paragraph idleness wise and intemperance had done their miserable work and the dead mother lay cold and still amid her wretched children idleness what is the meaning of idleness laziness or inactiveness wise meaning bad qualities like addiction to the alcohol or any kind of drugs or anything any bad qualities that is the wise and intemperance lack of control over anger lack of temperance that is the intemperance and these three evil qualities they had done a miserable work and what was the miserable work that is the death of a poor woman the woman lay cold and still amid her wretched children wretched children means the unfortunate children or the miserable children and this poor woman she dies and she lay in front of or the amid amid means the midst of the poor children or the miserable children and what was the reason for her death three factors three evil things idleness wise and intemperance and we will see about the death of this poor woman in the next lines she had fallen upon the threshold of her own door in a drunken fit threshold what is the meaning of threshold that is the bottom part of the door she had fallen on the threshold and what was the reason for that one she was drunken fit she had consumed alcohol and because of that she had fallen and she died and in front of her frightened little ones little ones means children in front of her own children so that is why the authors start with the three evil things idleness wise and intemperance and because of these three bad qualities this poor woman died and the three children they became orphans next paragraph death touches the spring of our common humanity what is the meaning of that sentence it means all humanity is afflicted by death afflicted afflicted means affected negatively so all humanity is affected by death there is no escape from death that is something inevitable in the life of human beings the expression the spring of our common humanity means all men and women they are just like the flowers which are blossom during the spring season and destroyed later the human beings also just like the flowers we have a wonderful life but later we all are aware about one thing that there is death waiting for us so that is something inevitable death is inevitable in our life and irrespective of class caste color nationality money the class anything our education we all die that is a fact and that is inevitable that is the meaning of the death touches the spring of our common humanity all men are afflicted by death affected by death this woman had been despised scoffed at and angrily denounced by nearly every man woman and children in the village so this woman from this we get an idea about the woman who died she was not accepted by the villages she was despised she was hated by all people scoffed at that means mocked so all the villages they used to mock at this poor woman because of her character maybe because we had already seen she died because of 
her drunken state. Then angrily denounced. That means the villagers they used to criticize and accuse this girl and this woman. So the entire village they hated this woman. And but now as the fact of her death was passed from lip to lip in a subdued tones, pity took the place of anger and sorrow of denunciation. So the villagers, the entire village, they used to hate this woman. But after death, no one was worried about the mistakes this woman done to them. That is the thing we notice. Whenever we alive, no one is there to praise our qualities. But once we die, then all are ready to say, so oh, that person was something very great and he used to do so and so. So that is the human nature. While we alive, no one is there to praise our virtues. But after death, many are there to praise us. But there is no use in that one. So the news spread from one person to another in a subdued manner, subdued tones, that means in a mild voice. And in the place of anger, pity took place. Earlier, the same villages, they used to get anger towards this poor woman, but now the place of anger, oh, there, when he pity towards the woman and the children. So there is a change. While alive, no one was bothering about the girl or the woman and they used to get anger towards this woman. But after death, pity. And the second one, and sorrow of denunciation. Earlier they used to denunciate. Denounce means accuse or criticize the woman. But now in the place of that, sorrow came. So that is the human nature. Why a lie? No one is there to praise. But after death, Many are there to praise and give support, but there is no use in that. Neighbors went hastily to the old tumble down hut in which she had secured little more than a place of shelter from summer heats and winter cold. The very feature of her house, it was old tumble down, that means that means the old one, disorderly one and almost fallen state. The hut was in an almost fallen state and all the people, they went towards the house of this poor woman. And about the feature of the house we notice, it was about to fall and the space it was not very much but she was having at least some space in order to escape from the winter cold and the summer heat. At least some space was there for the woman and the children to survive the summer heat and the winter cold. Some with grey clothes for a decent interment of the body and some with the food for the half starving children, three in number. So earlier we noticed that the villagers, they were moving towards the house. They were just moving towards the house to see the body and they were dressed, these villages, some of the villages, they were dressed in the grave clothes for a proper interment. Interment means for the decent burial. Interment means burial. For the decent burial, some of the villages, they wore a grave clothes, that means the dress which is used for during the burial. And some of the villages, they carried some food for the starving children. Three children are there for this poor woman and they were half starving. No food for them, so some villages brought some food for the children, three in number. Of these, John the oldest, a boy of twelve, was a shout lad, able to earn his living with any farmer. Now we will see in detail about the three children. The first one, John, a 12 year old boy. He was stout lad. Stout means very strong. The boy was very strong and able to earn his living with any farmer. That means at least he can, if he is working with any farmer or anyone, at least he can earn his living. 
That means he can manage his life. He is able to manage his life. So he is very strong and tall year old boy. That is the first one. And the second one, Kate, between 10 and 11, was bright, active girl, out of whom something clever might be made, if in good hands. So the second one is a girl, Kate, and the age it is approximately between 10 to 11, and she is a bright and good girl. And if she is in a good hand, then something good can come out from her in future. That is use. And the third one. But the poor little Maggie, the youngest one, was hopelessly diseased. So we had seen the three children. First one, John. Second one, Kate. And the third one, Maggie. And the first two, we noticed that they were able to manage themselves. John, he was a stout boy. And he can earn his own living if he works with a good farmer or any person. And the second one, Kate, she is a bright girl and if she is in good hands, something good can come out from her in future. And what about the third girl, Maggie? Two years before, a fall from a window had injured her spine and she had not been able to leave her bed since except when lifted in the arms of her mother. From these lines, we can understand the condition of the third child, that is Maggie. Two years before, a fall from the window. It injured the spines, so the girl is paralyzed. And she always needed the help of someone in order to move from one place to another. She was a bed ridden girl and she used to go out when when she was carried by her mother so from these three children you can understand that the first two at least they could manage their life by themselves but the third one she needs the help of others otherwise she may not be able to manage her life so i hope that you understood the story that we discussed till so one woman died because of their some bad qualities and then the children they became orphan many villagers came to give food to the children those who were orphaned three children are there first one John second one Kate and the third one Maggie the first two John and Kate they were able to manage their life but the third one, Maggie, she is not physically fit. She always needed the help of someone in order to do her daily chorus, daily activities. Now the third paragraph of the story. What is to be done with the children? That was the chief question now. So the, we had seen many villages came to this poor house. Then one question arised. What is the question? We notice that three children, they became orphans. So one question raised that was, what is to be done with the children? The reason is that the dead mother would go underground and be forever beyond all care or concern of the villages. That means she will be buried very soon and no one will be bothered about the woman later. That is a normal thing. At the time of burial we may cry and everything we do but after the burial and few days after no one is bothered about the person who died. So the villagers they were thinking that okay the woman she would be buried very soon and no one would be worried about the woman later. But what about the children? Three children are there and who is there to take care of this three children. That was the question being asked. But the children must not be left to starve. That was the chief concern of the people. This woman, she will be, she would be buried very soon. But these children, they should not be starved. After considering the matter and talking it over with his wife, Farmer Jones 
said that he would take John and do well by him. So we had seen that there was a discussion going on regarding the security of these three children. So one person came forward and his name John, a farmer. After having the discussion with his wife, Mr. Jones, he decided to take care of John. Then what about the second child, Kate? So we will continue. And Miss Ellis, who had been looking out for a bound girl, concluded that it would be charitable in her to make choice of Katie, even though she was too young to be much used for several years. So the second person also came to adopt the second child. The person who came forward to adopt the second child is Miss Ellis. And she was looking for a bound girl. Bound means an obedient girl. And she thought, Miss Ellis thought that it would be charitable. She may be doing a charity by adopting this poor and helpless child. Was too young. But she understood that this girl, that means Katie or Kate, she was too young and now at present there may not be any use but in future there will be some use with this girl. So Miss Ellis was ready to adopt the second child. I could do much better, I know, said Miss Ellis, but as no one seems inclined to take care, I must act from a sense of duty expect to have trouble with this child. She says that she could do much better and since no one was ready to take care of the second child, then Miss Ellis thought that it is her duty to do something for the second one. Inclined. Inclined means prefer. She preferred to take the second child. So here Miss Ellis is expecting something. That means the troubles from this child, the second child, Kate. Why? Because this girl is brought up by a woman who is not disciplined. So this girl also not disciplined. So Miss Ellis is expecting troubles from this girl. And what about the third child, Maggie? That we will see in the next class. Hope that you all understood the story that we discussed till now. Thank you. Have a nice day.